Arch Linux is my personal favorite Linux distro. If you've seen this channel at all before, you know that's no secret whatsoever. But I've only been using Arch for a couple of years now, probably going on five. But Arch is considerably older than that. And as of a couple of days ago, Arch Linux is now 20 years old. So let's go all the way back to the start of Arch and find out if anything has really changed, if these 20 years have actually helped to improve the distro. Let's start off by finding out if the goals of Arch have actually changed. And back in the original FAQ, there was this question. What is Arch Linux all about? What's it trying to do? Arch Linux is my perfect distro to sum it up. I started building it for two reasons. Firstly, I didn't find any other distributions that met my ideals. Some came very close to what I wanted, but there were annoying quirks or an added complexity that seemed to hurt more than help. And secondly, for fun, and to give something back to the free software community since I've taken so much. Arch Linux is fast, packages are compiled with i686 optimizations. Arch Linux is small, it doesn't install things that it doesn't need unless you ask for them. Arch Linux is simple. Almost all utility and package management programs are written in Bash, except for the package manager itself. Arch Linux is flexible. Because of its simplicity, Arch Linux can easily be extended or modified to suit different tasks. And while the scale has changed, the amount of people using Arch Linux, along with the amount of optional software available in the repos, as well as things like the software being used to achieve these goals, things like swapping out the original init system for using things like the systemd init and other changes like that, I think overall, all of these goals are still the principles that Arch Linux is being designed under today. Now, those were the goals that Arch Linux had. But let's find out about the absolute first release of Arch Linux, Arch Linux 0.1 Homer. And if you know anything about modern Arch Linux, seeing a release number along with a name probably seems really weird. But it's not like Arch with a static release from the start and then changed to be a rolling release. It was a rolling release from the start. So from there we had 0.2 Vega, 0.3 Firefly, 0.4 Dragon, and then all the way up to 0.7, which was the final release of Arch Linux. And from that point, they didn't have version numbers or have names because it's a rolling release. It doesn't really make any sense to do so. But at the time, rolling releases were still very much a new concept and no one really knew how to actually manage them. Nowadays, what Arch does is it still releases new ISOs, but they're basically just timestamped with whatever day they came out. And this ISO came in at a whopping approximately 300 and 10 megabytes, which is a little bit less than half the size of the current ISO, which considering how many years have passed, I'm surprised the ISO is not bigger. I guess that goes to show that Arch is trying to keep things simple still, but the modern ISO does have a lot of extra inclusions, which is going to make the ISO considerably bigger. Also, I'm sure that some people are nostalgic for this original logo, but this logo is really, really bad. So we have Tux going down a slide, which is Arch, along with some binary on it. I don't know what that binary translates to. And then binary in the background and Arch Linux written there as well. This is such a bad logo. So if you wanted to use this anywhere, it needs to have a black background because otherwise you just won't be able to see the rest of the text. This is not how you design a logo, but... The logo was designed by a developer, so, you know, you get what you get. And on March 11th, 2002, Arch Linux 0.1 was released. I finally got a bootable ISO image on the FTP site. The bad news is that you don't get a pretty interactive installer, but if you wanted one of those, you would have gone with Red Hat, right? The funny thing is you can say, oh, even from the start, Arch has never had an interactive installer, but the plan for 0.2 was to add that interactive installer, and it did have one. For a period, Arch did come with an interactive installer. It wasn't the only way to install. You could always go and do the manual installation if you wanted to, but that actually was there. And nowadays, it's sort of come full circle because now the Arch ISO ships the Arch install script, providing you with another interactive installer. Besides that, there are some other pretty crazy plans for 0.2. For example, documenting the Arch build system and providing a CVS-like update method so people can start building their own packages. So when 0.1 came out, there was 
literally zero documentation, at least public documentation, on how to make a package. Even if you worked out how to make a package though and use it on your personal system, there was no way to submit that package and then have that in the Arch repos without going and basically emailing the developer. That's how he was accepting new packages. Also, the first version of Arch didn't ship with the first version of Pac-Man, it actually shipped with Pac-Man 1.1, and the plan for 0.2 was to finish Pac-Man 1.2. This would offer a really obscure and unused feature, the ability to update your entire system in a single command basically offering Pac-Man-Capital-S-Y-U. Now you might think that it's weird that it was missing, but the FAQ answers exactly why it was. Are you going to add dependency support into Pac-Man? Yes. Pac-Man didn't have dependency support at that time, so basically you would need to make sure you manually update everything, otherwise it could cause very serious problems. Also, add more documentation. Our docs really suck right now. Please, if you have any questions, just ask. Also, if you want to help out in any way, please let me know. I'm a student, so my free time comes and goes at the will of my evil professors. At this point, the Arch Wiki wasn't a thing. It didn't exist until about 2004 or so. At least that's the earliest I can find on the Wayback Machine. And even back then, it was nothing compared to what it is today. It had a couple of pages, but that's basically the extent of it. The most online documentation you got was the install guide. Now, this is the install guide for 0.2, where the installer did exist. But if you were doing the manual installation, this is what you got. This is literally all of it. No post-installation or anything like that. Basically you were pretty much on your own, or you found the small number of people who also happen to be using Arch Linux and ask them for help, or maybe try to get some of the developer's time. Now, as of the first release, third-party package mirrors didn't exist. There was no way for you to make them. I believe there were some mirrors being run by the developer himself. It wasn't until two days later that that feature was even added. There's one funny thing I want to mention about the ABS. I'll try to get the docs up for the ABS, the Arch build system, which in my opinion is one of the best advantages of Arch. With ABS, you can easily create new packages and it's trivial to rebuild existing packages with your own customizations. Even considering stuff in the AUR, most people that use Arch don't manage really any of their own packages. Maybe they'll have something for like their suckler stuff, but besides that, I don't see any time I've ever run my own package. And at the bottom of this page, there is a list of some of the notable packages included with this release. And some of these, some of these are really cool. Linux kernel 2.4.18. This went stable a couple of days before Arch Linux came out. So the dev probably had everything set up. The kernel just dropped and he's like, you know what? I'm changing it, let's just go with the newest kernel and see what happens. Also for the record, that wasn't a binary kernel, you would have to go and compile it yourself. Now if you did the install script available in 0.2, yeah it would go and do it for you, but you still had to compile the kernel on your system. Along with X486 4.2.0. Now the X might sound familiar, but it's not the X we know today. So X486 was a popular implementation of X11 from 1991 to 2008. Basically, it was the display server for the time. But then in 2004, due to some license changes that started to violate the GPL, people decided to fork the project and then go and make Xorg. And Mozilla 0.9.9, not Mozilla Firefox, because Firefox didn't exist yet. Mozilla was basically the internal name being used for Netscape Navigator, and this was prior to that shift over. Along with Window Maker, the greatest window manager or desktop environment ever created. This is a quote from the Window Maker website. This reproduces the elegant look and feel of the next step user interface. This is the most 90s thing ever created. If you don't know, Next Step is the operating system that Steve Jobs went and made back when he got fired from Apple. 
Now that was just a small subset of the packages available, and if you want to see a full package list, not for 0 0.1, but for 0 0.2, the earliest which has been archived, I will leave this link in the description down below. This package list, that's the end of it. That's all of it. There's not many of them. And if you're a crazy person and you want to go and try the original version of the ISO, you're going to have to do it in a VM, unless you have really old hardware. But if you're doing it in a VM, there are some extra steps you will need to take. And luckily, someone has done a GitHub gist explaining how to install it inside of a VM. I don't know why you would do it, but the information is certainly here. It seems like in the past 20 years, Arch has come a really long way. It went from a project being managed by one dude with a very small list of packages, but a fairly respectable list for the amount of people that were working on it, to a distro that basically everybody who knows about tech has at least heard of in some manner. Even if it's just the butt of a joke, basically everyone's heard of it. But even after all of these years, it's still following the same design principles. It's still a very simple distro that you basically have control over and build up yourself. And I can't say that's true for every project that sets goals back at the start. So let me know in the comment section down below. How many years have you used Arch? Maybe it's been one, maybe you've been here from the start, or maybe you've literally never used Arch and I know you're a Debian user or something like that. I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere and a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.